hi hi my name is Ruben Rosato and this is my review of Mantis Burn Racing for the Xbox One this review is in partnership with BigBossBattle.com who have kindly provided me the code from developer Vufu Studios as with all my reviews from BigBossBattle.com this is 100% my own opinion and I'm not being paid for so what is Mantis Burn Racing. Well, Mantis Burn Racing is a top-down top down style racer. Uh, think of Micro Machines. It has a pretty extensive career mode. Um, it also has a four-player local split-screen racing. And for online modes, it has up to about eight players in a one-more-go style competitive racing uh, situation. They've also added a RPG-style upgrade system for your vehicles, which should help with replayability. So let's move on to the gameplay. The first thing I'd like to talk about uh, is actually uh, the number of vehicles. Um, there are seven vehicles in all to unlock, and you unlock these by XP, which you get from racing. Now, once these are unlocked, you still have to buy them. And this is also items you earn. You earn, I am basically earn money through racing. Um, the vehicles themselves can be customised, so you can have a different vehicle colour to suit what you need and you can also have a boost colour which is also a little bit nifty. Um, you can't spin the vehicle around, you get a fixed view in this screen as you can tell, um, but generally it's not too bad, I quite liked it to be honest with you, I don't, want, I don't have to mess around, I don't have to move around. Um, one aspect to this is that the vehicles themselves can be upgraded three times so basically what happens is you get gears like basically mods um, and you achieve these by completing certain um, racing and missions once you've got these mods you attach them to your car any way you wish and this is from anything from the speed uh, the grip the suspension the acceleration uh, the boost in fact the basic model of your chosen vehicle starts off with three mod slots. Once you have filled these three mod slots, you then have the ability to upgrade the vehicle. Now, the upgrade of the vehicle means you get bigger mod slots, so you can then adjust certain more things in terms of speed, you know, speed, acceleration, grip, whatever, etc. Um, the visual change is minor, uh, and I think this is where they could potentially have given it a little bit more of a flair. Um, the only thing you'll probably get to see is that maybe a bumper is added to it or some lights. What they have added on here is also online weekly challenges. Now these are quite hard to complete, uh, but they do provide you with a decent amount of money and a decent amount of gears, which can then help you add mods. So this is pretty nifty and I did like this. Now what you'll do is you'll generally progress through your career. Now your career is quite extensive. Uh, there are three seasons. There are rookie, pro and veteran. Um, and along these three seasons there's a variety of different races for you to actually accomplish and try and beat. Now I will tell you here, you will only complete these races if you come within first, second or third. Anything else, it doesn't count and you have to keep doing it until you do so. Um, these races themselves though, they're not your standard race, they also provide you with something else. Um, for instance, uh, they actually provide you with challenges um, and these challenges then help you get gears which I said can feed back into your mods. Now I really like this sort of aspect to it, it gives you more than just simply racing around the track and this is one thing that I really think they did really rather well. In terms of the actual uh, gameplay itself, it's smooth, very, very, very smooth. The vehicle movement, the uh, tracking on it, the you know, everything from the actual control of the vehicle is perfect. It really is perfect here. You can basically um, drift around corners with such ease, and when you add mods, they do feel like as they change the vehicle. So. Please be aware, you know, if you put a lot more in terms of um, your grip, but don't put a lot in boost, you're going to kind of slow yourself down, but you'll turn on on a nine pence. This is a tactical racing game, and you can easily be outmaneuvered by the AI. So, time your boost carefully. The amount of times I boosted around the corner, I went straight into it, and lost myself three places was numerous. Um, it is kind of one of these games that you have to learn the racetracks to really get the uh, best out of your car. What I will say though is, once you do learn the tracks, um, that means limited amount of success. As I said, your vehicle changes 
do contribute a large factor to this. Um, one thing I really liked about this game was the cameras. Now, it has around four different camera features. You've got the tracking one here, which follows you around. You've got a tight one, which gets closer to your vehicle and keeps to your vehicle. You've got a standard one, which is just basically your Micro Machines version, which sits back. And then you've got the long distance one, so it gives you more visual range in terms of when corners are coming up. Your choice of these can be switched at any time throughout the race, but generally you're going to be too busy trying to get ahead of that opponent and really try and get to first place. The AI here is an absolute sword. Um, they will work together in some cases to try and bring you down. The amount of times I got stuck behind three or four vehicles who just would not let me pass and they really kind of work together to try and keep me back so it is really important to try and get off a good start straight away and move clear to the front however just because you're at your front don't think the AI is going to sit back and wait around they will chase you down and use every advantage every knack nook and cranny to try and get you back into last place and this leads me on to the graphics of the game. Now, the game's visuals are distinctive. Uh, there are two separate hubs. Uh, one is an uh, industrial cityscape, and the other is a kind of a rocky environment. Um, though there are some racetracks that merge these stages together. For me, the more natural environments are here, where Manus Burn Racing's visuals really shine. The light, the shadow, the smoke as you're sliding around a corner, the intricate details all produce a fantastic look. Um, the lighting values uh, here are brilliant um, and indeed the textures look like it's been a photography that's been baked in at high resolution. Now I don't actually have the software to identify if this is running at 60 frames per second. Um, I'm gauging the it kind of is, but I have not the information to do that. When I was playing with this in co-op, I didn't notice any uh, detailed drops in any way. Um, so it doesn't suffer in that. And it also includes a pretty impressive depth of field. Uh, this emphasizes distance and is particularly impressive as the background detail drops away as the circuit gains altitude. However, there is something that does bother me with the graphics on this, and that is the actual cars themselves. Now, this maybe this is because of their distinctive look, but what I would like to do is see if we can really uh, give ourselves a different visual appearance from that from our AI neighbors or even co-op on um, other people. Uh, this can be pretty much improved with a patch though, and one I would definitely recommend for them to do. And now we get to the sound part of the review. Mantis Burns Racing has really good sound. Um, it's crisp, it's clear. Um, every vehicle has a distinctive sound, so you can tell the difference between each vehicle that you are driving. Um, also, there is distinctive sound in terms of your terrain. So this little squeal to, um, squeals on tarmac is completely different to, you know, drifting on gravel, as you would expect. Um, the actual music here is kind of a mixture of, I would say, 1990s punk with a little bit of a, a techno thrown into it, which I quite like. Um, the only thing about the music, though, is that after about six or seven different cycles, it does repeat itself. So maybe we could just potentially add a little, a few more songs in there uh, to kind of bump it up but generally you're not really going to be interested about that you'll be too busy playing the game um, apart from the actual car sounds themselves which have good bass and good depth and if you've got a decent set of headphones on you will notice the difference um, there isn't really much to say about it they've put in a basic number of sounds here and to be honest with you it doesn't need anything more than that I feel that if they added too much it would detract from the game itself. And this leads me to the rating of the game. Now I rate games in order of avoid, rent, great purchase and must own. My rating for this game is a great 
purchase. This is mainly because it has a fantastic career mode, it has four player co-op and an eight player online. The graphics are fantastic and smooth um, and there is no frame rate dropouts when playing on co-op. The game is quite in depth and it does provide you with a vast array of cars to play around with. My only issue with this game is that we would like to see a little bit more customization options in terms to the car themselves so we don't actually have the same color or model as per our opponents and i'd also like to see a third visual hub however vufu have stated they are going to do regular updates so as i stated before this will probably end up being patched now, the game currently sits at £10 on Steam. I couldn't actually find out the Xbox price at the moment, but for that price, it is a great purchase and one I would truly recommend for your mates and you on the weekend or during the week. Anyway, this has been my review for Mantis Burn Racing. Give me your thoughts on the matter. Do you agree with it? Have you played it so far? Did you come pick up and purchase it? Anyway, until next time, I'll see you guys and girls later on.